Uh, good evening, everybody. I must confess, this is the first time I'm being a moderator. I've always been one <laughs> answering questions, but today I'm on the other side. Uh, as a kid, I think, uh, like during my times, we were always playing some sport or the other. It wasn't like, I mean, okay, I, I did play all games. And today, when you see the children, especially the girls, it's more on academics and uh, television, the mobile and everything. And it's come to a time when we're really discussing something, encouraging girls to play the sport. We've got Dr. Anjali here. And I'd like you to tell you how, like, the, the academics, how will they encourage girls to play the game? Um, just like, uh, you know, she said that she's doing this for the first time, asking uh, questions. I think I'm doing this for the first time, answering questions. Uh, we should being have a professor, places, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being a professor, I'm always on the other side. I'm uh, always asking questions. So, um, the role of academic institutes. So, if you see, um, when I started uh, my MBA degree, which was way back in 1990s, um, we were about 20 girls and 80 boys. So predominantly, one is to four, you know, there was a huge skew. Um, over a period of time, I think business schools realized that they need to have better gender equity. Uh, because the classroom was becoming, you know, a, a monologue with a lot of engineers. Not that there's anything wrong with engineers, but the moment you have diversity, you have a lot of creativity and ideation. That's when B schools decided that something needs to be done and they opened up their doors to a lot of people from arts, commerce, um, architecture, etc. That resulted in a lot of participation of women in B schools. And today in 2020, when I teach in my classes, um, it's almost one is to one. So what has really happened is that when academic institutes take on this role, they actually champion a particular cause, we see greater participation from society. If you look at our schools today, a lot is being done. But even today, when we look at sports, typically you have a sports day, which happens once a year. The chief guest is typically male. Nothing wrong with that. But why don't we have women's sports icons coming into the school and talking about their stories? State level players, national level players, who would really be role models for young girls. Um, the other thing is also, in a lot of schools I've noticed, when you're opting for sports, for girls, it is badminton and cocoa. Uh, there's no cricket, there's no football. That's, that's still left for the boys. It's still happening in Mumbai, in a lot of schools. So this is where the role of academic institutes, schools, colleges, uh, B schools, has to change. Like, I mean, you were telling that uh, cricket and football, you know, is only for boys. Uh, when we decided to start cricket, I was asked that question, why are you playing something like cricket? Why can't you play TT or, you know, one of those games? And it's like usual, oh, you'll get dark and nobody will get married to you. That's the usual uh, questions. Or, you know, they tell you things like this. But I think cricket has come a long way. And uh, we have Mithali here, whose uh, biopic is going to be released shortly, showcasing her journey through her career. So Mithali, what are the changes you've seen like from when you started playing and now? I think uh, the first change uh, I have seen um, is uh, when I got into cricket, it, I, I was introduced to the sport through an exclusive boys camp. And I couldn't enroll myself in that academy because it was only meant for boys. And I joined the camp uh, my school had a uh, girls team and which i myself didn't know till till i got into the sport so um i think in today's time if you see if you take up any academy they are happy to enroll women cricketers they're happy to enroll young girls uh, and uh, give them coaching that is a huge change and and also that um, you know i'm, I'm sure ma'am you'll agree where in those days in the 90s when you used to travel a lot of people used to ask us whether we are a hockey team with those huge kit packs. Never did anybody even think of asking us whether we play cricket. But today it's, it's, it's a common thing to see a girl walking on the street with a kit bag because people now know there is 
a women's cricket team and and it's it's a profession it is a viable sport for all the young girls to take it up as as a career option so it's it's been uh, the, the sport has come a long way from where we all have started in the 80s and 90s and the sport itself is a brand so are the players now and with the central contracts i think a lot many parents are uh, happy to encourage the girls if they show the keenness and talent uh, uh, to pursue cricket yes yeah, so do you think that uh, with the release of uh, your biopic and julian's uh, biopic and the way our girls are performing there'll be more girls coming forward to playing the game yes uh, i'm sure there will because these biopics are not only uh, you know showcasing the journey of uh, me uh, or julian but it is also a way of showing people or the future generations the the hardships and the challenges that the ex cricketers or the cricketers of the 80s and 90s have to go through to keep the sport alive and what sort of challenges they have faced from the society how they've endured it to keep it alive for the young younger generations or the current generations to take it up so at no point was a sport deteriorating yes there were a lot of girls despite um, you know obstacles like hardly there were any games or international series the fundings were very difficult until we came under the bcci banner i think despite all these obstacles uh, the cricketers kept the sport alive i think it's important for the current generation to know the history of women's cricket like how there is a history for men's cricket every award functions or whatever articles are read there is a lot about uh, the history of men's cricket but we don't really read much about uh, what uh, the the ex cricketers the uh, the history of women's cricket so i think through these uh, biopics we'll definitely be able to uh, you know tell people the stories of the women cricketers and their challenges yeah that should be and I'm, i hope more girls really come forward to play the sport anju you have an academy and uh, one of your trainees shaili singh just you know won a medal how difficult was it for her to come from jhansi to bangalore to train and how difficult is it for you to get girls to come you know from the uh, tier 2 3 cities to join the academy a very good evening, good evening everyone um my academy anju bobi sports foundation we started in 2015 and the encouragement what i got throughout my career it was immense so i was in a time where the transition period was happening so before that actually it was very difficult for a women athlete to come up though we have great uh, names are there but still like my mom she was she was very much interested but she couldn't because of the family uh, like those days it was not uh, possible for them to come up in take sports as a career but she was very ambitious that how i came up so it was my dream to bring lot many athletes women athletes and i knew that uh, there are lot lot more talents in our country and uh, some areas like up or mb they are still untouched so the, those athletes actually even though they are ca capable or able they, there is no way to come up so shaili actually she accidentally came to us me and bobby in different competitions we watched her and we discussed and then we brought her back to bangalore uh, she is a single mother kid and she was really struggling during the, those days and she was uh, in a uh, school where it was she was not training for long jump she was training for some other events but she was very good in long jump so uh, we when uh, i saw she was very pale thin and uh, she was not uh, even though she was 14 she was not that the her height and the build was not up to that age and it was a tough task to bring uh, her back to bangalore because uh initially again from her parents not from her family there were a lot of issues they were not ready to send her to bangalore this far away place and she thought she was telling i thought it's uh, it's not uh, somewhere abroad it's not in india <laughs> so uh and but she was very brilliant and um, in two years she started picking up and three years she went up to the world stage and got a medal 
So our academy mainly aiming for girls and we have got 16 athletes. So I think it's my duty to support our women athletes and I, I believe there are a lot, many talents in India. Yeah, and I like how do you sort of market it? Like how do you, you know, like today safety in, the, in any of the sport for a girl, <coughs> that's so important. And how do you sort of put that across to the parents and everybody? Yeah, uh, it's like any other uh, places in sport also. There are many issues now, harassment, many, many uh, uh, issues are coming up. And people are aware about it. Even the athletes are aware. That's why many things are coming up, coming out. But I am there, so I am mentoring my athletes. So Bobby, they, he's coaching and I'm mentoring my athletes. And I'm always keeping watching them and I'm always giving advice to them. So what to do and what not to do. So both things I'm always advising. And luckily they are now in Sports Authority of India campus. They are staying there. And see our policy, sports policy now supporting athletes and there are a lo lot of effort is taking up. Actually from the Prime Minister's level, a lot of effort is coming into sports and a um, uh, lot many things are happening now. So the awareness itself is giving a lot of changes in sports. Yeah, now to Alisha Abdullah. She's into a sport that's really, I mean, I think there are hardly any women in it. And you've got your academy. I think you got into the sport thanks to your father who was into it. How do you sort of, in your academy, how do you get the girls to come to ride and do things like that, which, I mean, okay, nowadays you do find a lot of them on the mobikes, not the scooty and all, but how do you get them to race and do things like that? Uh, firstly, hi, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, sorry, I couldn't be there, but, um, I'm coming back to my sport, it's a very difficult uh, sport because uh, right from uh, sorry, uh, yeah, so right from uh, eight years old, I've been into the sport, and it's been uh, quite a journey for me because racing with men, uh, both in cars and bikes, uh, has really you know made me into a very very strong person, both uh, physically and mentally. So uh, this happened, this journey happened when I raced, uh, when I went international to Asia, when I started racing. I thought, okay, just because I'm really good in India, I could, you know, perform, I could race only with guys and men because girls were a little weak over there, I was expecting. But uh, to my surprise, uh, the guys who I was racing with were behind uh, women. You know, the women were leading the race, car race. So, and that's when I realized, okay, so I'm like nowhere compared to these girls international and I had to actually, you know, um, be, be up, be, be uh, you know, change my whole game plan. So, when I came back to India, that's when I decided to, uh, you know, take up the sport very seriously and um, I got in more women into the sport. I got around 165 women into bike racing. I was not interested, to be honest, I was not interested in car racing because uh, as a lot of athletes on the board uh, right now, they were speaking about, uh, you know, people, uh, I mean, the government supporting and all that. My sport is never recognized at all, no matter, I think, how many years we go on, it's never going to be recognized. So, because it's a very luxurious and very expensive sport. So, um, that's when I, I uh, bike racing is quite reasonable compared to car racing. So, I, could, I got a lot of girls coming to the sport. I had about 165 plus, in fact. But the issue is, you know, there are so many issues, so many issues which I faced having a girls' academy, women's academy, that I don't know if uh, any of you have faced this. Um, I get people saying that, you know, mother has an issue, uh, I have to get married tomorrow. What if I fall off the bike if anything goes wrong? You know, if I have to have a transplant or surgery, you know, so many issues happens. Um, a transplant as in, you know, we have rods uh, implanted sometimes if we fall down. So there are so many issues which came up and sometimes, uh, no offense to any women, but sometimes uh, I get people going late night parties and not coming back next day. 
So I feel that whoever sitting down right on the dais has really, really, really put their heart and dedication and you know their soul into this to be who they are. You can I can blindly tell you because I'm one of them. Uh, you know when it comes to punctuality, when it comes to dedication, it's very, very important. No matter if you're a boy or a girl, you know if you're whatever your age may be, if you have the dedication and that that uh, you know the the passion to work towards it, you know without any distractions. Especially for a woman, yes, uh, you can be no matter wherever you are. But uh, that's the reason I failed. I am uh, very uh, sad to say this. I failed uh, two years down the line. My my academy just crumbled because having a women racing team is not easy. So I uh, have a mixed mixture of racing uh, a team now where I have men and women racing. So that's how it started, and that's how it slowly crumbled down. Yeah, you're talking about the issues that you face. How do you deal with it and how do you try and convince your trainees like it's okay and you know you should be riding and things like that? Uh, well, I always tell them that, you know, uh, I there's my own way of motivating them, saying that, you know, you, know, you can do it, you can do it. And sometimes, sometimes, uh, two or three women out of these, a pack of uh, women, they, 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 they shine. But when they shine, they think that, okay, this is the end. You know, I am the world champion. You know, it's not even gone to a national level. So that's when, you know, when it gets to your head, you crumble down again. You know, that's when you should not have too much of, uh, you know, they say uh, too much of overconfidence. So that's one of the things I faced. And uh, I've just got only one person out of that 165 plus girls. I've got only one person who's doing really well now. But again, she's racing in the women's class, not with the guys. And uh, when it comes to people who, who really can't get up there, there's a, I mean, there's a, there's a line, you know, uh, a lot of people, like I said, it's all about ego. Women are very strong in the mind, very, very strong. And when it comes to sport, women to women, to be honest, it's very hard to train them. If I have a man training a woman, it's a completely different game. But if I train, it's all about, how can she say? You know, it's like this, it's like that. You know, it's, it's really difficult to uh, train a woman, but trust me, if we train them right, we are, no one can touch us, for sure. I mean, that's great. I mean, I mean, you say there are 165 girls coming to your academy. I mean, nobody will think that, you know, there's so many of them into the sport like that. While well, with cricket, uh, Mithali, like, uh, nowadays the trend is, like, most of the girls want to give up studies and concentrate on the game. Is it uh, viable as a career? It is. I think um, uh, clearly in the last two three years we've seen the increase in the in, in the ratio of the girls taking up the sport in, in uh, not only um, you know at uh, school level. In fact, uh, a lot of them come up uh, earlier. It was just as a hobby. They would start like just to get away with, with those two months of summer vacation, which I did. I started that way. Uh, but uh, I think in today's time, everybody are taking it up as a professional. It's not; it's no more a hobby. Um, and with the central contracts and the women's IPL scheduled next year, clearly a lot of uh, things are uh, happening at a bigger level in women's cricket. And um, I, I'm sure that uh, the girls and the parents are aware of the development in women's cricket. Uh, BCCI making an effort. Uh, to promote the sport, the world body ICC has started the women's under 19 uh, in the World Cup for the for the girls. So the the that is I think is one of the significant thing which has happened in the recent past under 19 World Cup uh, because you know a lot many players who start young at some level they give it up because they feel that uh, not everybody are going to. Uh, wear the India jersey or an India cap. So uh, they feel that if they can switch the field, maybe they will be better off. As you said, there is a safety net sort of a, uh, thought process in, in, the, in the girl's mind as well as with the parents. So uh, for especially for such people, if they have a level of under-19 World, uh, under World Cup, so a young girl, even in the schools, they will then gradually start to build school, uh, school teams, you know, the under-16 level. 
maybe that will also encourage girls to take up the sport in school level which now i don't uh, i don't see that any school teams have a girls uh, 11 or or a girls team or even a school tournament which we had long back even i played a couple of school national school tournaments but um, uh, over a period of time i think the the schools probably stopped encouraging girls or maybe they feel that to have a a, a a team sport is very difficult when it comes to girls and that is why i think i have been hearing uh, the uh, the other panelists talking about uh, tennis or badminton I, they feel that you know it is better to invest better to invest in individual sport where we don't need to have a team and that is why a lot of lot many girls then you know divert into the individual sport and the parents also feel like okay it's it's an individual sport so a player a, a girl can pursue it but to have a school team clearly whether it is football hockey or cricket team there is a specific number that you have to have to form a team so it is again comes down to the schools to actually encourage to form those uh, numbers to form the team and encourage the girls so that if any of a player represents the indian team in the 2019 world cup it's a huge honor and a privilege that a school will have of boosting uh, you know of for uh, having a uh, international player so i think um, it's it's important that you know uh, with the under 19 world cup i think there will be a lot of changes at that level uh, especially for girls and uh, for women's cricket in india yeah i mean when i was playing i think most of the girls had to decide bet- be- between the game and the career because there were no career o- opportunities for us but i think the government and academic associations i mean they should sort of market the team and what kind of steps can they take to get girls to play sport um so if you look at the role of uh, academic institutes government and brands all three are very important um i really like the point that uh, mitali has made you know about the individual sport so we conducted a research amongst our students um and very quickly we asked them you know what comes to your mind when you think of women and sports and 90% said badminton um obviously um we know the reason right there's a lot of media coverage um so the they they associate a lot of media coverage and the athlete um around 45% ended up saying cricket um they said boxing they also said wrestling so again you can see the these are the sports which when they get talked about they start associating it um when we asked the girls students about their participation at the school and college level uh, most of them said that they battle stereotypes and the stereotypes being uh, you need to be good marriage material so you know sports means you will get tanned uh, you will become dark um you know what if you get injured in laws are not going to support you interestingly the boy students said something very different most of them ended up saying that the media coverage glorifies male victory which is why it is fun watching men in sports so they said that why don't we have more of coverage of women in sports biopics make for great eyeballs so you know everybody is really looking forward to it when they said cricket they also said shabash mithu you know so boxing maricom uh, saina so these are the things which are top of mind for uh, children when we look at brands um typically look at the way women are being portrayed yeah it is still very stereotypical you know fair skin good looking we are not really normalizing you know women working out yeah now brands like dove for instance are trying to change the narrative and talk about inner beauty or mama earth <clears throat> uh when you look at microsoft it's actually tied up with china um and they have this uh, entire campaign where she's talking to the principal um talking about you know why sports is essential at the school level so i think the role of brands in normalizing you know women participation in sports uh, becomes very important at the academic institute level we have uh, harvard cases we have a harvard case on ipl we have a harvard case on chennai super kings when you talk of nike you immediately think michael jordan so again you can see you know academic literature i think again mitali pointed out there's not enough literature about women in sports we hardly have any material um i also like you know what uh, alisha spoke about you know when you're looking at girls um one of the things which the boy students said is that even girls from privileged background prefer to keep away from sports and uh, they said this is 
probably a mindset thing. So they would require counseling, they would require some kind of, you know, a, a shift in their mindset. Uh, and this brings me to mind uh, Cheryl Sandberg, who's the CEO of Facebook, in her seminal work called Lean In. She says that women have to lean in, you have to grab opportunities, and you have to believe that you can have a marriage, you can have a career, you can have a social life. It's women who end up telling themselves that if it's sports, I will not be able to have good marital prospects. You know, if I'm into sports, I'll probably not have a social life. So a lot of the boys were actually saying that the girls have this mindset. So probably the role of brands becomes very important over here. Yeah, and I guess it's the upbringing also. I mean, you know, uh, if you see, when you see a baby girl, you may give her a doll. But for a boy, you'll give her a cricket bat. Which, I mean, that itself, right from, you know, that age, it's sort of stuck in the mind that, okay, the boys have to be playing a sport and the girls have to be sitting at home, which I think the mindset has to be changed. And I think, like, even the, I think it should be made compulsory that the girls should be into some sport or the other. Because I, as a sports person, I mean, it sort of, you, it teaches you so much. Any sport for that matter, it teaches you I mean, you, you get that confidence. I think even in studies, you get better grades when you, you know, you're concentrating on the game. There's, there's so much to it for a sports person. And still, I mean, the girls do sort of hesitate to come forward. I mean, there are some maybe the uniform, or like, you know, they have to wear shorts and something like that. In the, you know, the tier, tier two, three uh, cities, there will be, you know, the parents not wanting their girls to be, you know, in shorts and things like that. I think that's a big, big uh, thing that the, you know, the girl athlete or the sports person has to face. And, like, have you sort of come across anything like that? I mean, if it's, or in your athletics, I think everybody is running in shorts and things like that. But it, there is a difference. I know, I mean, at the beginning, I knew there were some girls who didn't even want to wear track suits because they're not used to it. Yeah, even during my time, actually, um, that was the talk in my family. So uh, when my mother decided me to send to in athletics, so my uh, some of my immediate uh, family members they they were pointing the same thing. If you send her to sports, she will become dark. She won't get any good uh, husband, uh, family life. It will be a trouble. And again, she is wearing shorts and she is jumping in front of everybody. So that was the that was a uh, issue then. But slowly, slowly again, when my photo was coming, started coming in the paper and I, my name was visible everywhere, then their mindset also changed. Okay, this is something good. And uh, even in my uh, time, actually, the Europeans, they used to wear two pieces. But I was not ready to wear that. So I was feeling some kind of, uh, um, like so there was a mind block even for me also. But Nike, I was a Nike athlete, Nike sponsored athlete. So Nike used to give me two pieces. And one day I told Bobby, anyway, in India, I'm not going to wear. I will wear that in Grand Prix, Super Grand Prix competition. And where I got a medal and next day, friend base, that photo came and my God, <laughs> that was my <laughs> reaction. So, but still, <clears throat> now kids actually, they are ready to wear anything because that is, there is no body shaming now. Nobody is bothered about, they all are really looking to the talent, not to what they are wearing or what, how they are doing. So now there is a lot of changes, but still even Sanya, she, uh, she actually faced a lot of issues uh, because for her, her community is not allowing her to wear uh, shorts or a skirt. So she faced a lot of issues. So, but now I think people are not really That's bothered. So it's, Everything will, uh, I think there's a change. Yeah, changes are happening. So that's another thing that like, um, for a sports person, menstruation, how do you sort of counsel the athlete about it? And um, Yeah, that was a really big problem when, uh, during our time. But now kids actually, there are a more, more, lot of advanced things are there. And, but see, there are two types. Some Kids actually, they are really, uh, pro they, they are really facing problems during those days. And some, like me, actually, we don't have any that much issues. But still, I miss two, three major me medals just because of that. And if I say something like that, then people will think that oh, she is finding some excuses. So I was 
keeping my shutting my mouth and uh, simply oh i was not able to do out the that day was not good so i was just vaguely saying something else but i miss one uh, world championship medal and one commonwealth medal just because of that that we cannot escape from that that's our body nature and we have to uh, like uh, i don't think there's a permanent solution for that you know because with cricket i mean you wear whites with ali and then how do you deal with it at that time i think now in the in the last it's all colored clothing 10 years we have we pretty much in more into colors than whites but uh, i think uh, you know the, the the athletes or the players find ways obviously because the sport that it is uh, there are few players who find it very difficult during uh, during those days to take the field and uh, but then uh, fortunately our sport does give us a little bit of uh, uh, you know uh, space there that you can get uh, you know substitute in sometimes the the field the player can take the field for few hours and then sort of we can use we do have those rules in place that we can use but um yes i mean i, I agree with anju that uh, those years when we were playing a lot more cricket with whites um it was it was constantly in our mind like you know since it's those days what if somebody notices or what if there is a patch in the whites um it's a constant thing and uh, sometimes it's quite emotionally draining and physically a lot lot many players also feel uh, uh you know uh, drained out and uh, uh, those days the the perception towards uh, the the menstrual cycle was the players weren't very open or very uh, vocal about um uh, the, the changes in their body or the pain that they have to endure for those days but in uh, but the current generation is is fine with coming out and sharing that information with with the physios with the trainers to sort of uh, you know play uh, continue to play during those days and how they can take the assistance that they can take the field thank you thanks so much and uh, any questions from the audience Good evening, everyone. I'm Mitra Srinivasan from Fiji Global School. Uh, as you all said, the times have changed now, and uh, women are starting to open up. Uh, parents are being supportive, but there are still many more girls out there in every corner of India. They have uh, exceptional talent and interest in sports, but they are unable to shine because of the societal pressures they are enduring. What do you all want to say to them? um okay <clears throat> taking a cue from the world of business so uh, like i said you know earlier see um typically parents operate from a safety mindset they have very good intentions at heart right so initially an mba was a very expensive degree yeah it was not really thought of as a career for girls but the moment uh, we started seeing women icons right so when you have an indra nui you have an naina lal kidbai you have shikha sharma you have women ruling parents immediately think that okay this can be an option for my girls as well let me invest in their education i think that's what we are seeing now in sports with so many icons around us slowly the mindset is changing uh, that sports is not an extra curricular activity it can be a career a very very viable career and obviously uh, the role of you know media becomes very important in encouraging this shift in mindset so all of us together academic institutes the government the media all of us have a role to play in this thank you thank you ma'am good evening ma'am um, this question is for uh, anju ma'am ma'am what are the major challenges you have faced as a woman at athlete as especially being a jumper um as a jumper i don't think i faced any challenges because i was fortunate enough to get uh, good coaches during my career the entire career uh, even when school even uh, uh, before that also my parents supported me a lot um but uh, i think uh, during my time indian women 
actually uh, was doing better in international arena. Uh, I was there um, before Karnam Malleshwari was there, then Sanya was there, then Saina came. Uh, but yeah, of course, um, triple jump I was doing, and that was a real challenge for um, me because uh, that was too much injuries actually uh, doing. And uh, a few people and doctors are advising don't do triple jump because uh, we are uh, taking, uh, when we take a uh, hop, it's uh, 15 times of our body weight is coming in single leg and uh, long jump it's almost uh, 9 to 10 times of our body weight is coming into one leg and too much injuries actually. I got many major injuries during my career and with the pain I was doing continuously and you cannot imagine what was the situation. Then I took, it, it took almost two years after my first injury me to come back and I was not even able to walk. So for a person like me, actually, it was uh, it was beyond my imagination because I was think, always thinking I'm I'm a perfect woman, and um, I, oh yeah, of course, as you all know, I uh, I born with a single kidney, and uh, that was actually during my career it was a big challenge for me to come out, and um, yeah, other than that, I was not facing any issues. Yeah. Um, as an athlete, uh, how would you motivate the other girls to do jump events? See, long jump is a one event where we can, because it's a completely technical event and uh, we can showcase our talent in international arena also. We already proved that we can challenge the world and we can win the medals. So all these events which we already proved, kids are ready to come. And long jump, that's, see, our sp we need to have good speed, we need to go have good uh, jumping ability and we need to lift like a weightlifter. So it's a complete event, and the beauty, once we take off, it's a, it's a flying feeling what we are getting. So once you experience that, see, we cannot uh, uh, forget that feeling. So it will still remain us, and so it's a beautiful event, I guess, and we, see, but very difficult to teach. Uh, but once we learn, that's it. We can fly, really fly. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good evening, ma'am. My name is Mridul. Um, my question is that women coaches are uh, less represented compared to male coaches, and especially in athletics, ma'am. Why do you think this is so? See, coaching career, it's, uh, normally it's coming after our career. So for women, actually, after a career, we are bas mainly opting um, family, uh, and it's uh, very difficult to come after marriage because of kids or work or so many issues are there. So that's why I think women athletes are not coming back to sports. But very few actually uh, athletes are coming like back um, like me. And now uh, some changes are happening. And as a career again, um, after uh, retirement, uh, people are thinking why, because it's, it's really, really tough. The athlete's life is really, really tough. So after the career, again, they want, even I took a five-year break after my career, and I was thinking, okay, I will sit simply at home. But after five years, even, I was thinking, like, I'm not doing anything. I was in the limelight. The, suddenly, I'm nowhere. So that's why I started thinking about my uh, academy. So, but most of the people are, actually, they are okay with the work, with the kids, and with family, they are satisfied. That's why they are not coming back. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, uh, Anju and uh, Sudhan sir. I'm here, I'm Jay Shankar Menon. I'm not here to question the panelists. I'm just to, since the uh, topic is encouraging girls to play in schools and com communities, uh, being a father uh, of Krishna, uh, who is a upcoming uh, athlete, I'm just sharing the experience uh, uh, of mine and my family. We allowed Krishna to travel to Jamaica, and, she, and thanks to Anju and Bhaskansa for all advices. Uh, she was there for six months, and, and uh, each weekend uh, she was attending uh, various meets, and she was competing with all the Olympians. You know, Jamaica, uh, and I don't, I know, no need to talk about athletics. And because of her performance, she was selected for the uh, NCAA scholarship, and uh, uh, it was a surprise for me that uh, she's the first Indian thrower to get an NCAA scholarship of 1.5 crores. <laughs> My point is not, like, not that. 
why it is she is the first why why can't others i know that there are various opportunities she is um, unfortunately she is not here she is on vacation but she is in malaysia now otherwise she would have been happy to add more experience on this why it is not happening there are various you know, i know bas i heard basket sir talking about the uh, panelist uh, talking about the infrastructure of india that we are talking and talking nothing will happen but when there are opportunities in abroad leave them to train there and they can come back and represent india why we are not doing that I have. A, I really need to point this out. Uh, I'm so sorry, but um, if we had fathers like you, a lot of fathers like you who can encourage their children to go abroad and uh, you know, so supportive. I think we'll have so many of Dutch, you know, who's 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 going to go everywhere and, and represent. But sadly, not many people think like you. Everyone wants their children to become doctors, engineers. you know and uh, end up in big firms then rather than becoming in going to a sport and you know this is the mindset of our people It's sad but i i i mean correct me if i'm wrong thank you alisha for your appreciation and uh, now she has applied uh, the system is new years I, i don't know how many of you know she has completed her first year in uh, she was in texas el paso university and uh, now she has applied for uh, transfers and more than 20 universities are behind her now including uh, the washington university and all the stuff and her studies that's what i was discussing with baskaran sir she scored 44 and 5 so studies and uh, uh, training both has to be uh, looked after uh, uh, together sorry i'm um, taking time so i just uh, taking this opportunity i think parents should encourage as alisha said thank you for the opportunity thank you sir we'll take one more question i've got a request there one more question and we are good to go just, just one last question mitali we had seen lot of cricket from you what next <laughs> well uh, see i have i have said it uh, in the past interviews that uh, uh, i'm just fortunate to be in a time when there is a lot many avenues for uh, uh, women cricketers post their retirement uh, a lot of options like administration or, or uh, commentary mentoring coaching umpiring match referee so there is i i guess i'm spoiled for choice maybe i can say but uh, yeah let me see uh, uh, considering the interest that i have in uh, i would probably choose uh, administration given uh, a choice because uh, as a player i can get the experience of so many years and what the players need probably and and also sort of uh, structure things in a way that it is not difficult for uh, a young girl to uh, dream of playing for india and how to channelize the um, you know uh, what sort of a pathway it is to uh, reach that goal so uh, something something in those lines is what uh, i'm looking at thank you amazing thank you shabash mitu we all want to say that um, but i'm just thinking for a moment here you know anju ma'am uh, i had one kidney but i won all these medals um, you know look at that when a woman wins she wins against so much that's what we learned today she fights she fights thank you thank you to all the women on stage i just want to tell you this you are the enablers because looking at you more and more women are inspired so thank you for being the inspiration thank you very much for this beautiful discussion and sudha shah ma'am you brought out uh, you know Uh, you spoke about menstruation and as we speak it's a trending topic on internet wimbledon stars saying that they will not wear white during their menstrual days so pertinent points wholesome discussion that's what this conclave is all about and i would request uh, sudarsha ma'am to honor our guests on stage with a small token of appreciation audience you can definitely clap and so much more